Star Wars merchandise is a topic we've covered extensively here on this channel. Hell, when it comes to the topic, nobody does it better. But in a post-Rise of Skywalker world, the landscape of Star Wars merchandise has changed drastically. So much in fact to the point that there is no official toy line for the film. Just a bunch of simple bits of nonsense. Like Dio, the Rose Tico of the Rise of Skywalker. Well, Dio may not wear a potato sack, but his parents are Vietnamese. No, no they're not, he's a robot. Sorry for the cultural appropriation. Now there are rumors swirling around that Star Wars toys are in the toilet. <laughs> What's new? While I'd like to take an I told you so victory lap, I can't. Because that's wrong. Star Wars toy sales are up. A lot. We have official numbers from Hasbro, so let's take a trip down memory lane. We're going to take a look at some of the modern Star Wars toy garbage dumps while we find out the information from Jedi Temple Archives. Stay tuned, folks, because at the end of this video, I may say something that shocks you. Hasbro released their numbers for the second quarter of 2020 earlier this week, and of course, the numbers were heavily impacted by the pandemic. Let's not dwell on Hasbro's overall numbers too much. We're all here for Star Wars, after all. Partner brands, which include Star Wars, Marvel, Frozen 2, Beyblade, etc., were down 35% overall. However, Star Wars bucked the trend and revenue for the brand grew in the second quarter. The only other partner brand revenue growth is Frozen. As you can see here, the decline of quarter two is dramatic. It's the lowest result ever since Hasbro restructured their segments. Revenue for Star Wars has already bucked the trend in quarter one of 2020 as well. It was the top performing brand for Funko and Hasbro reporting growing sales. That Star Wars bucked the trend under horrible conditions and despite a cataclysmic decline overall of the segment, more than one third is nothing but impressive. Of course, some of the partner brand's decline can be attributed to Marvel toy sales shrinking to normal levels again. Marvel just had its Force Awakens moment last year, and it was always obvious that the very strong sales associated with Endgame would decline again. Hasbro, as usual, does not provide detail numbers, but revenue growth in a time of unprecedented decline is certainly a strong signal. So it seems Star Wars toys are still popular. Not the Force Awakens level of popular, but the deep valley that the brand was in two years ago has been left behind, and the revenue has grown again since then. Hasbro also talked about overall strategy. Hasbro is pursuing a digital-first orientation, and apparently with some success. Almost 30% of global toy revenue in 2020 was made online. Point of sales, i.e. places that sell Hasbro toys, increased. Some markets saw a double-digit growth. Hasbro specifically mentions the US, UK, France, and Australia here. In light of brick-and-mortar retail inventories declining in quarter two, Hasbro attributes this to ongoing shift to e-commerce, temporary store closures, and retail management decisions. On the supply front, almost all factories and warehouses are open again. Also, shipments for Star Wars toys remain strong in quarter two, and Hasbro is optimistic that the rest of the year, especially with The Mandalorian Season 2 coming later this year. So what's the takeaway here? Star Wars toys are still in demand. Star Wars toys are popular, despite a wide-held belief that no one wants them anymore. The fact that Star Wars toys, alongside Frozen 2 toys, completely bucked a dramatic decline of partner brand sales and actually saw a revenue increase is nothing but remarkable. Unfortunately, we cannot say why that segment exactly contributed here, but statements by some other toy companies point to The Mandalorian being a top performer here, so maybe Baby Yoda toys played an important role. So I'm going to stop the article right about there because there's one thing that this article likes to gloss over. So I'm just going to say what everyone is or should be realizing. Stuff from the sequel trilogy does not sell. I've been saying it for years. Now to the F-bomb-laden dickbags out there who are going to say, but Jeff, The Rise of Skywalker just came out. This is a response to that film's success. No! No, it's not. When we look back at Star Wars toys from last year, a movie year, we got a new Han Solo figure, new Lukes, stuff from The Mandalorian, but very little from The Rise of Skywalker. There wasn't a new Finn or Poe or Rose Tico in the six-inch scale. Only Rey, Janna, Dio, Sith Trooper, Kylo Ren, and some of the Knights of Ren. Not all of them, just some. This is the only Star Wars film where the main bad guy doesn't even get a figure. Where is the Palpatine figure? The one from last year was from Return of the Jedi. No, it's not the same as The Rise of Skywalker. Where's the mechanical chair thing? What about the great chips from the movie too? There was Poe's X-Wing, which is currently generously discounted, while Luke Skywalker's X-Wing from the same set is still full priced. It's all very simple. Toys from the sequel trilogy do not sell, and when Hasbro is focusing on the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy to a lesser degree, there's profit. I mean, is it wrong for a company to want to make money? The answer is no. It just goes to show that whatever Kathleen Kennedy and her crazy coterie from Constantinople thought about Star Wars, that eh, was way off the mark. I was recently sent an interesting article that covers a bit of this. This as in how social media forced a company to bend the knee to forced agenda-driven marketing that ultimately costs a lot of money for Hasbro. And it's an older article, but it still checks out. So let's get some footage rolling while we listen to the moment where Disney went wrong with Star Wars. Where's Rey by Michael Bohm. Would your son want to play with an action figure of Rey, the central figure from the latest Star Wars film? Would your daughter? It's too bad they don't have a choice. Hasbro, among other toy makers, left out one key female figure in their Force Awakens game sets. 
Hasbro says it was to preserve plot secrets, but an industry insider said the choice was deliberate. The insider who spoke to Sweatpants on Coffee on condition of anonymity said the decision to exclude Ray was based on marketing assumptions and not for plot reasons. Manufacturers of products that tie into popular movies have been in the news for recent months for appearing to favor male characters over female ones. Products featuring popular science fiction fantasy superhero movies have marginalized or completely excluded the female characters. The controversy has peaked in the last few weeks with Lucasfilm's Star Wars The Force Awakens released at Christmas. Buyers found that Rey, the protagonist of the film, was missing from a significant number of Star Wars-related products. Hasbro received criticism for their Star Wars Monopoly set, where the players could take part of four different characters, all male. Also, Hasbro's Battle Action Millennium Falcon playset features Finn, Chewbacca, and BB-8's characters, but not Rey, though in the film, Rey was the pilot of the spaceship. Hasbro issued a statement to Entertainment Weekly on January 5th, assuring fans that future versions of the Monopoly set would include Rey. The Star Wars Monopoly game was released in September, months before the movie's release, and Rey was not included to avoid revealing a key plot that she takes on Kylo Ren and joins the Rebel Alliance, according to the statement. Absolute rubbish, said John Marcotte, founder of Heroic Girls, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting positive, strong female role models for young women. Hasbro was merely trying to save face. Monopoly is a game about buying and selling properties. There's no plot to be given away by the Rey character. Jenna Bush, founder and editor-in-chief of Legion of Leia, a feminist sci-fi fan site, blogged, That's not how Monopoly works. The top hat and the thimble weren't plot points either. So I want to stop right there because there's a reason I'm bringing this up. When I interviewed J.W. Rensler, famed Star Wars writer, we discussed the change in the relationship between Lucasfilm and the companies that want to license Star Wars products. It used to be a much more open experience. If a licensee was working on a project, they were given ample information about the upcoming film to create the product. These days, everything is so damn secretive that no one, including Disney, knows what's going on. And that's where the problem lies. Because you have these reactionary people on the internet that want to write blogs and articles and, you know, scare these companies into making more Ray and Rose Tico and other female-centric products, and in reality, it's really not working. At all. So if we look at the sales figures that Hasbro is recently reporting, and we reference that with the amount of Star Wars products that have come out during that time, we see that there's not a lot of sequel trilogy representation. It all boils down to Hasbro being forced to bend the knee to people online because they're afraid of the outrage mob that comes with all this bullshit. At the end of the day, Hasbro is just the victim here. All they wanted to do is continue the legacy of making Star Wars figures based off the new films. But Disney doesn't want to tell them what goes on. They don't want to tell them who's who. So they make them wait and they look stupid. And Disney, on the other hand, gets to say, oh, we want to promote female characters. We want to promote diversity. We want to promote these things. But then they don't. And they put the blame on Hasbro. And it's funny, too, because for all these people that want to be outraged about uh, the political choices made by Hasbro, no one wants to call out Disney for shrinking down Finn from the poster or removing a lesbian kiss from the Rise of Skywalker. Those are things that go against what they promote. Hasbro, on the other hand, is just getting the short end of the stick because they are the scapegoat in all of this. Now, it goes to show you that once Star Wars has abandoned these new crappy sequel era characters, uh, the sales will rise, and it's not just over at Hasbro. Funko Pops, yes, I hate them as much as you do, probably more actually, but Funko, the company that produces the Pops and other lines of figures, are seeing a revenue increase in Star Wars. A few days ago, Funko presented their quarter two earnings, and things are as expected. Funko's revenue in quarter two declined by almost 49%, but Star Wars is still a top performer, even bucks the trend. The current pandemic has also affected Funko's business. Revenue for the second quarter of 2020 is down almost 49% when compared to 2019. Funko only made $98 million compared to the $191.2 million in 2019. However, it seems Star Wars was not impacted by the current pandemic. Funko, unlike Hasbro, offers a few more details about their top performing licenses, what Hasbro would dub as partner brands, and you can find this in this handy chart in their earnings presentation that lists the top performing licenses. So let's take a look at the top breakout properties from the last five quarters, shall we? As you can see, Star Wars was the number one license in quarter one of 2020, with The Mandalorian in the third place spot. Now The Mandalorian has taken the top spot and Star Wars has dropped a few places down to fourth. But the important detail is how many sales the top property accounted for. Back in quarter one, Star Wars, excluding The Mandalorian, was responsible for 4% of sales. In quarter two, The Mandalorian was responsible for 9% of sales. So while Funko's overall revenue dropped, The Mandalorian accounted for quite a few more sales. In other words, sales for Star Wars, Mandalorian, Funko Pops did not collapse. Actually, The Mandalorian sales in Quarter 2 most likely even slightly surpassed the sales for Star Wars Funko Pops in Quarter 1. One year ago, after a holiday season with no new movie, Star Wars didn't even make the top 10. And now both the legacy Star Wars Funkos and The Mandalorian are top performing licenses for the company. This shows that Star Wars toys, and here especially the Mandalorian toys, are quite popular again, despite what some may believe. 
after a really bad 2018 and early 2019. In 2020, the brand can even buck the general downward trend. Both Hasbro and Funko basically report the same thing. Increased sales in very challenging times. And while Hasbro does not provide any details whatsoever, Funko's presentation shows that not only are sales better than one year ago, when the sales were still bad, but also better than in previous quarters, showing an actual upward trend. This, for the first time in several years, shows that Star Wars is a top performing brand for Funko. You can also see the Fortnite craze seems to be dying down. Oh, good. It's certainly remarkable that in times like these, people still buy new Star Wars products from several companies. Let's hope it provides plenty of incentive to come up with many new figures and toys. So there you have it, folks. The equation is simple. Star Wars plus the Mandalorian minus the sequel trilogy equals profit. That's, that's all it is. There's nothing more to it. No more rumors, no more fallacies. This is the truth directly from the horse's mouth. You can't get much cleaner than this. This is the federal tax stamp of quotes from the company themselves, the sales figures. Here they are right in front of you. And for those out there that want to say, oh, you guys always said Star Wars toy sales were terrible. You're the reason why people reported it. Guess what? We always had facts and figures. Go back and watch our videos where we quote CNN or Business Insider or any of these other places that want to talk about the decline of Star Wars sales. And hmm, what was going on right about then? Oh yeah, The Last Jedi. Hmm. Again, these Star Wars movies from Disney are the only Star Wars films that have an incomplete toy line to the degree that these films do. And across the board, you don't have many holes in the original trilogy for characters. I mean, I can think off the top of my head, you don't have the Tonica twins. I'm sure you're missing random pilots and stuff like that. But we're going into the, the ancillary characters, the inconsequential characters, the blink and you miss them characters. I mean, the Tonica twins, the Tonica sisters, do you even know who they are? They're two ladies at the cantina. Do they offer anything to the story? No, they don't. But you know what? That film, those series, that original series, excuse me, has characters like Amperu. And guess what? Amperu sold. Uncle Owen sold. I have Uncle Owen and Amperu figures. You know who I don't have? The Emperor from The Rise of Skywalker. Where is he at? The main villain. All this cool stuff. We're supposed to be excited for new Star Wars stuff. But... It just goes to show you fans only care about old Star Wars stuff. It's funny how, right after Comic-Con, the disappointment that was Comic-Con, what did we see? Well, we saw high-end figures from Sideshow, and we got characters like Obi-Wan and Anakin from the Clone Wars series. We also got a brand new Luke Skywalker and Dagobah gear when he crash lands, so I guess it's X-Wing Dagobah. Whatever. They have so many damn names and so many costumes, it doesn't matter. The point is, they're all iconic, they're all prolific, and they all sell. Rose Tico, Rey, Finn, Poe didn't sell our garbage. Why do you think they're bringing back the Millennium Falcon? Well, it's from Galaxy of Adventures. Well, if it's really just from Galaxy of Adventure, why do they include the dish and have all the sound effects from the original films? Riddle me that, Batman. Riddle me that. So, uh, there we go. We figured it out. We figured out everything. It was the new stuff that didn't sell. So, hate to say I told you so, but I've been telling you so for the last three years, and guess what? Still feels good to be right. So... There we are, folks. It's a new day for Star Wars merchandise. It's no longer the doom and gloom that we all were living through. We were just living... It was just the world we lived in. And now everything has seemed to settle down, even though the real world is falling apart around us. Star Wars toys are on the upswing in sale, so we can all sleep at night. That replaces all your real-life problems, right? No, it doesn't. So, folks, before we go, let's take a look at some new footage that I shot that just goes to show you that what they say in these articles is accurate. New stuff from The Mandalorian is everywhere. Star Wars toy sales are up. The highest they've been in quite a while. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. And uh, after the footage, well, we're going to head out. So, uh, folks, thank you for watching. Be excellent to each other. And uh, I told you so. That still feels good. So, here we are at my local Target, and the Star Wars pegs are pretty picked over. Hmm. But somebody seems to be in abundance. More on him in a little bit. So, first off, we're talking about Dio. 150 bucks, uh, I'll pass. But for $15, I'll pass as well. Generic lightsabers are always fun. Can't really rip on them too much unless they say meow like the other ones do. But I can rip on something. What is Hasbro's problem with Chewbacca? I mean, why does he have to look like a butthead? Quite frankly, he looks like a peanut butter chocolate turd. And uh, Chewbacca is a noble warrior and shouldn't look like said peanut butter chocolate turd. He looks like a Hershey's and Reese's reject. 
and he comes with a little helicopter. That's cool. Said no one ever. Ah, the Bark Speeder with Obi-Wan Kenobi out of the Clone Wars. Interesting how they're going to the Clone Wars era, aka the prequel era, to make merchandise for people to buy. Hmm. Speaking of merchandise people will buy, the Mandalorian. I have seen this at many targets across the country. And uh, I'm looking at more DO, the beanbag version, because everyone needs it, right? Nope. Now, speaking of multiple versions, let's play a basic counting game. Uh, so we have one Baby Yoda. We have two Baby Yodas, a.k.a. the child. We also have... A third Baby Yoda. Probably the best looking one so far. Uh, not a plush, just a little figure. Uh, good for it. And finally, the big giant one that just fell on over. So four different Baby Yoda variations. So no matter your price range, no matter your dedication, you can take a Baby Yoda home. Now, I'm not here to rip on Baby Yoda, but I am here to say that if they put all their eggs in the Baby Yoda basket and that egg breaks, well, the basket breaks, you know the rest. Uh, and look, the only character left from Episode 9 is Janna. Yay, everyone loved her, right? Wrong. Let's look at these Baby Yodas one last time. And remember, folks, that if they gambled incorrectly on The Mandalorian, that's the future of Star Wars, a glut of Baby Yoda. Speaking of future of Star Wars, Dio does not have one. Here he is as a Lego, which I guess you can put some pieces together and he drives. Not really worth 70 bucks. And then over here, I wanted to review pet food. Not really. They had these Star Wars coloring books just sitting in the pet food aisle. Again, based off the Mandalorian. He looks so unhappy. Well, he's away from home, little guy. Anyway, these look great. I'm not here to rip on the art. This is really good line work. They probably just light box real photos, but who the hell cares? It is a rush to production product, just like everything with Mandalorian's name on it. It was rushed to production. But again, it looks good. I'm not really here to rip on the Mandalorian. I don't think the Mandalorian is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars. I look at these characters like Berg and I go, oh, that was a good episode. And I look at the lady with the horn on her helmet, and, you know, I was like, that's kind of cool too. So different Mandalorians. Speaking of different, here's a different Mandalorian book, the asset, coloring and activity pages. Again, Baby Yoda looks equally upset. And uh, this art is exactly the same. Again, it's a coloring book. I'm not holding it to the same lofty standards that I do a $20 action figure. But again, there's the child, and there's the Mandalorian. And uh, is that the future for Star Wars? I don't know. All I know is that Disney is greedy, and they tend to jump the gun, if you will. They will look at something and see it as the first, the next, the best, and they will go in whole hog. And sometimes it'll backfire. They thought Rose Tico was going to be this great big character. They wanted to go for representation. We're going to have the first Asian Star Wars character. And Donnie Yen was like, yo. And then I'm sure there are other, like the guy from Return of the Jedi, he was even like, yo, beforehand. And even maybe one of Lando's guards on Cloud City. Point is, Disney has bet the farm on Baby Yoda. And so far, it's working. But everything does have a limit. And I don't want Baby Yoda to be the face that killed Star Wars. I don't want people to put the blame on that character because that's not the case. Years of Rey and Kylo Ren and poorly produced characters, uh, that is why we had this years, the two years, the three years sales slump that we did. The, the Star Wars Dunn camp uh, had a lot of validity back then. And it goes to show you that once we moved through this garbage period, we moved forward to other things. And thankfully, um, Star Wars, the good Star Wars, has a future. So that was shot last week, folks, and those are the sales figures. So that's it for today. So folks, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you know that we're back to making videos. Check back tomorrow. Yes, I'm going to shoot for tomorrow for a video on Star Wars. And tonight, catch the High Council at a, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to be joined by John Talk. So if you're listening to this in the future, come back and find the High Council recording. And um, if you don't have the time for that, well, come back and find our video on John Favreau's Star Wars. Uh, folks, you probably haven't seen a lot of us in video form because some of your YouTube algorithm stuff has changed. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the bell notification turned to all. It's not fun to say. It's not something catchy we try to do. It's so you know when our videos go up because a lot of people are like, hey, guys, what happened? And I'm like, hey, did you watch our video yesterday? And they go, no, I didn't even know about it. So that's what's happening. So, folks, thank you for watching. If you want more of us, we are on Patreon. Uh, we have videos. We have comic book reviews. We have all sorts of things. So check us out there. Help us out. Uh, help put 
some quality entertainment out in the world. We need all of you to do it, and, uh, well, it's been happening. And we're very grateful, so thank you very much. So, folks, that's it. I'm going to head out. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter where you go, always be excellent to each other. <laughs>